Welcome again to the Frank Williams Stuff, where we keep issues real and alive and we bringing it to you from right here in San Francisco. So today I have two great guests that's going to be on our show, Miss Maddie Scott and Miss Carletta Jackson. So how are you ladies doing today? How are you doing, doing Frank? Thank you All so right. much for well, inviting us. Right. Well, you know, you guys work on important issues, important topics, and so... And so... Uh, important topic so we want to begin with you Maddie we would like for you to introduce yourself and tell the public who you are and what you do my name is Maddie Scott I am the uh, founder and uh, executive director of healing for our families in our nation um, I started the organization um, right after my son was murdered and killed uh, to gun violence here in San Francisco. He was killed July 17, 1996. At that time, there was no services or anything available for um, African-American families or mothers of color like myself who were losing our children every day to the streets. So um, um, the, the program is to help victims of violent crime, um, is to help parents get through the worst trauma nightmare of their life. Okay. And what is your son's name again? George C. Scott, um, father of two boys, Gabriel and Karan, um, who was at the time one years old and five and a half years old when their dad was shot and killed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, Carletta, how are you? I'm doing good, Frank. Thank you so much. You know, it really warms my heart to be here. You know, I remember when we did all that work for the census 2010 and <laughs> yes. we was all over district 10 up on the hill everywhere and what was so amazing is there's still so many black families in san francisco and uh that's one thing i wanted to stress to everyone is that even in the course of the outward migration of african americans out of san francisco due to economics obviously we cannot afford any longer to live here but we'd like to let you know that there are still babies young families mothers with four and five children who are actually right there in District 10. Mm -hmm. uh, my agency, Sojourner Truth Foster Family Service Agency, was founded by my mother, Alma Jackson. Uh, she's the CEO and founder. We've been in uh, doing care for at-risk children, youth families, and extended families for over 26 years in Northern California. And uh, we started right here on 3rd Street. Uh, our office now is 150 Executive Park near Candlestick Cove, you know, where they blew up Candlestick. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it's, it's really powerful to know that the work that we've done with these at-risk families continues. And um, there's, there's a lot that I want to say further as we talk. But I uh, just wanted you to know that me and Maddie have been working together for over 10 years. and. Uh, it's a very powerful thing to be able to work around the violence that we're currently addressing every day in our community and at the same time trying to get these babies back home to their mothers and fathers where both mothers and fathers oh, are currently incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you two women are doing some very powerful work in District 10. I mean, spanning from Bayview over to uh, not only what Sunnydale, mm -hmm. and even you even go all the way over to Patrol Hill, That's but, right. but really you all over, Fillmore, but really you all over the city. We're That's all over right. the city, and now the, the nation, city. because we have to be. Right, you it's, guys have been going to uh, Washington, Washington D.C. Washington, D.C., just got back with Mothers back. in Charge, and on our way back for the Million Man March, we will be on stage with Minister Louis Farrakhan. We just had a conference call with um, his chief of staff last week with mothers from all over the nation who've lost children to senseless gun violence, to mass incarceration, and to now women, African-American women, are the number one uh, leaders um, in uh, mass incarceration. We're the highest numbers in incarceration for females. Yes. Wow, and you know um, incarceration is a big topic today in the first place, you know, with the mass incarceration has really been happening for over the last 40 years. years. Yes, that's right? right. And I think just recently in San Francisco, they released some stats of the African Americans who uh, the highest incarcerated in San Francisco. That's right. I think 56 percent. 56 percent out of a three percent population. Out of three percent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you that's know what's what's also horrifying is the fact that in the state of California, 
we have the highest number of uh, children in out-of-home placement right here in San Francisco County. And so, you know, the reality is is that um, by having both parents and cots ready, these babies are on the street. They're actually, uh, the street is raising them. Is raising our children. Yeah. And so when people wonder um, why are the children so cold, it's because they don't have anyone that, that, that can actually love and care for them. And so the reality is is that uh, as the general truth of what we do, not only do we find homes for children that are in placement, but we help birth parents get their children back, and we actually do prevention, which is an intervention, to go in, find out what's really going on in the family, mm -hmm. do every, every kind of wraparound services we can to keep that family together. And uh, we're also now working with the DA's office, and we're very excited about it, around yes. the alternatives, alternatives to incarceration. Mm -hmm. And that key is to prevent the uh, actual uh, person from getting that first strike. Because once they get the first strike, it stops them from getting housing, uh, affects their bank account, uh, you know, college, college, everything. And so the scholarships, it, there's scholarships and their student loans. Mm -hmm. so, so when did your organization start? What year was that? Uh, 1989. And yours, Maddie? Uh, 2002. So how many children say in, um, if you have a rough estimate, say in Bayview that mm -hmm. you deal with as far as the journey of truth? How many children end up in foster care? How many of them end up as far as parent, uh, children of the incarcerated that you had to but go you know, and do some work with? This, is it a high what, rate? Is oh, yes. Yeah. So, so say, for example, and when you look at San Francisco County, over 80% of all the children that are in foster, foster care from, come from District 10. So what did Wait it a minute, is, say that again. That is, in San Francisco County, of, of all the foster children that are placed, put into the system, over 80% come from District 10. And what the reality is, is that if you look at District 10, it has over six public, public housing complexes. Alice Griffin, uh, the two in Sunnydale, Hunters, uh, Hunters Point. Point uh, well, there's at least three in Hunters Point. And then if you count Betrayal Hill. And so you have families that are the poorest of the poor. And so the reality is is that the, if when you look at the education rates in, in San Francisco, of the mass, uh, the majority population, over 70% of them have a college degree or a graduate d degree. But in terms of the African-American population, less than 3% have higher education. So you know it's economics is what I'm driving at. And so the reality is that these children are the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. And then on top of that now, we have over 75% of all children who are sexually exploited, Sorted. which means trafficked. Mm -hmm. In this county, they are African American and they come in, they come, they're, they're previous foster children, or current foster children. So the highest percentage of trafficking is between 18 and 24. We had to fight to get the benefits expended so that the children can now receive benefits till 21. Mm -hmm. Okay, because when they did the, the, the actual evaluation, they showed that after emancipation, that uh, we had the highest rates of homelessness, uh, homicide, homicide, mm -hmm. and uh, sexual exploitation, mm -hmm. as well as um, other type of you know, recidivism. What they say, modern day slavery. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of work that needs to be done, and it starts with education. There is no such thing as a teenage prostitute. That they, they are victims of uh, child abuse and sexual exploitation. No. A uh, person can under 18 can consent to a sexual encounter. And, and the reality is, is that they took the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. We have children as young as 10 years old being targeted into sex trafficking. So, wow, this is some powerful information that I know that, you know, we need to know as a people out here, you know, and concerned parents and citizens. Uh, not only in San Francisco, but throughout the United States, exactly. and yeah, how and prevalent um, child abuse um, 
It it's is. a driver, right. child abuse, child abandonment, mm -hmm. child neglect. And it's all right. disparities. Yeah. And all then, these disparities. You know, which bring me to you, Maddie, on, on the discussion of the violence that's happening in, in San Francisco. We yes. have a high rate of violence. Yes, and, we do. Um, it's been prevalent, mm -hmm. you know, for quite some years, um, even though the incarcerated rate has risen for African-Americans. Um, you know, some of the crime has went down. We can't say some of the crime has That's went true. down. But, but let's talk about the behavior, because a lot of what you were just touching on, Carletta, as far as some of the drivers for um, what's happening with our children, mm -hmm. how they even become children of the mm -hmm. incarcerated in the first place. Right. You know, which speak of educational systems, mm -hmm. they speak of our employment system, they speak of our economic system, right? Speak about those in poverty, right. correct? You know, so aren't these main drivers of, of violence, Maddie? Yeah, all of them lead to violence, every last one of them, socioeconomic. Um, the rents in San Francisco just went up for a one-bedroom. We just finished fighting to keep the Haynes Garden affordable housing, where these families were given notices uh, less than 90 days that they rents were going up to $2,000, $4,000, $7,000 for where they live at. How can families remain in this city? You cannot remain in this city and, and, and expect your family to, to survive without some type of repercussions and your children uh, forcing them to become young men on the street to uh, do livings, uh, living that's not acceptable that causes them to uh, return back to jail and to being incarcerated. You know, this is a very racist, I'm going to say it, because most folks don't want to say it, but it's a racist um, entity that we're uh, faced with. I feel like San Francisco has become Jim Crow mm -hmm. all over again. That's the way I feel. And it saddens me to say that because I left New Orleans for that fact. That's the reason my father moved out here from New Orleans to here for better life, for a better lifestyle, a better education, and uh, to have a productive living. But now uh, our people are forced, black and brown, are forced out of being forced out of San Francisco with regentrification. Uh, socioeconomic, not enough employment. The the uh, new um, Twitter companies that are here are here tax free, not paying any taxes. Um, our schools are not being uh, filled with the monies that they need to educate our children. The teachers don't get a proper w a wage. I mean, I can go on and on of these these things that are happening that that causes the violence. All this stuff plays a major role in violence. We know education is key in keeping a young man off the street and out of jail. Education is key. That's what kept us going in the WIN program. I'm a te I was a teenage mother, but we had the WIN program. We had a pick. Private Industry Council. We had all these wonderful programs that kept people, uh, young folks, out of jail, kept them trained and employed, that they would be able to have an affordable job so that they can stay out of trouble and stay off the roads of um, incarceration. You know, so um, I'm really sad that the way our city is going, uh, the the population of people of color are leaving here in drastic numbers. The numbers have gone down. I think we are now what three percent. Three percent. Three percent. You know, on that note about uh, on that note about the changes that's going on in San Francisco, even in the Bay Area and some other major cities across the United States, and not whether it's by coincidence or not. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you, Carletta. So, what about the children then? Because if these, if, you know, like Maddie's saying, rent is going up astronomical, you know, and what I want to add to that is that children, there's no pipeline from from um, high school graduation to employment mm, these right. days. And by so many major cities such as San Francisco that has the high tech companies now mm -hmm. that's doing a lot of high tech, they're not really matching that no. degree level of employment to even get hired by them. And there are no incubators within the, any of the districts from uh, these these programs has right. been coming into, or exactly. these corporations have been coming into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with our children too? Well, see, you know, this is that's a very powerful question. The reality is, is that today, uh, on the news, they showed uh, teachers, nurses, um, union um, employees. They all came together to demand and say to Mayor Lee. San Francisco is not for sale. And so what this is about is the fact that none of us
can afford to stay here. And and San Francisco is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And the reality is is that I've been here since I was five years old. I went to uh, John Muir Elementary, then Merrill Loma, Aftis. I'm a Lowell graduate. I went to San Francisco State. I got my law degree from uh, New College of uh, California, right here in San Francisco, public interest law. Mm -hmm. I worked with Hennessy. He was one of my professors when I was going through law school. And what I'm saying to you is that the flavor of San Francisco and what we stood for and how we championed other, you know, wrongs, that is the history of that's San history. Francisco, mm -hmm. St. Francis. St. Francis, And the reality right. is now that corporate entity with these huge dollars and big pots have surrounded themselves with the mayor. And the reality is, is that, you know, the, we are being forced out. And you know what I really want to say is that in terms of African Americans, we were the first to be forced out. And when we were being forced out in this outward migration, there was a deliberate system that said anyone in public housing, you, you can't, you're not welcome to stay in San Francisco anymore. We'll give you a voucher, send you to Antioch. We'll send you to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. We'll send you to all these other different locations. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the poorest of the poor of those families, those are the ones who could not afford to leave. They're still here. And so as African-American nonprofit agencies in everything we do, we need to, number one, put it on notice that violence is a public health, health epidemic, epidemic. Exactly. And that they this is affecting not only uh, the fabric in our community, mm -hmm. but uh, not only San Francisco, the state of California, but the United States, states of, of America. America. And that we have a duty to educate our children, mm -hmm. to, to be to, for them to feel safe at school, uh, to for these kids to be able to play outside instead of being inside the house afraid of a gunshot. I have foster children who were actually on the scene when the murders occurred, when their father, little baby was right on his chest and they still shot into the house. Mm. You know, we've had babies who have actually been wounded and died. And now we have a situation where females have also been murder victims. Mm -hmm. Not just, you know, that was my baby's daddy, but now the girls. And so uh, we were pleading with the clergy and, um, our, city and, and our city officials mm -hmm. to come together and really begin to address Jesus. what's going on with these families. And the last thing I want to say is if we don't wrap our arms around these babies, mm -hmm. then these are the children who will grow up with no care and love in their heart. Mm -hmm. If you haven't received a caring situation, you don't know how to care for someone else. Mm -hmm. And um, the reality is, is that we're doing a mentorship program for girls who have been trafficked. I have 20 mentors now, and I have 15 girls that we're going to do a mentorship with. When you ask them what could they have done to what? prevent them from being on the street, they say one adult who showed love and care for them That's could have changed their life. That's powerful. That's very powerful. And what I want to get to, you know, I, w I would like for you guys to just touch, give me 30 seconds about a few more solutions that you you two have made to the city, to the Board of Supervisors, or to the mayor, in some form of a resolution as to how to curtail some of this that's going on, whether it's with housing, whether it's with the education, or typically on violence to children. Can you give me a couple of things that you guys have we, we, championed for? Yes, we just now um, have put into Congress. We went to Congress with this all the way to D.C. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping that our Congress will definitely jump on board with Congressman Conyers and others across this nation. That violence is now a national health epidemic and it needs to be treated like Ebola or any other disease. It is a disease. It's in our neighborhood. It's prevalent and it's hurting people of color, particularly children. And they need to look at this and treat it with the respect that it needs to be treated with, with education, equal opportunity for housing, employment, you know, and health care. You know, um, our children are being forced out into the streets. Our parents don't know what to do. You know, um, 
if if this was to happen in, to Columbine or anywhere else like Newtown, things happen. Things are moving in Newtown. Things should be moving and that's true. for San Francisco just like it is in Newtown. Mm -hmm. And that's so. true. And I think in a meeting that we was we were all in recently where it had to do with the disparities of yes. in, in, of African Americans incarcerated, yes. it was said if this was happening to your children, it mm -hmm. would be in a state of emergency. That's, that's right. right. My, so what I would like for you guys I to do. Too, also. I sure. Want to I want you to say what you have to say, Carlette, and mm -hmm. I also want you guys to hold up, you know, the pictures that y'all brought here in remembrance of loved ones and people in our neighborhoods who have, you know, met violence and, yeah, this and are no young, longer here. This is a young lady, Renisha, Renisha, who was just murdered. Renisha Monique Raven, um, born May 31st, 1996, the year my son was killed. And she was recently murdered August 2nd, 2015, in Plaza East, in front of the whole neighborhood, mm -hmm. in a drive-by. And... Uh, mm -hmm. We're working, we just did a healing circle with Plaza East with Sister Trina and Ophelia and others in the neighborhood. Um, asked, when it was asked by Supervisor London Bree to go to Plaza East to do some healing, uh, health and restoration for that community that is hurting. We did that yesterday. We had 35 parents show up and community uh, activists. It was a powerful meeting and we're looking forward to working with them continually. And this is, um, Demario Odell Taylor, this happens to be um, one of our mothers who've already lost a, a, grand, a, a son to violence. She lost her grandson, Demario, um, this summer in um, well Oyster, po Oyster Point. That's his little girl he's holding. Demario was a wonderful young man. He just lost his life in Oyster Point um, while he was driving with some other friends. And uh, Debbie Uribe is, is his grandmother. Lydia George is his mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the other things that we're also doing is that uh, we have a program at Washington High School, and it's uh, directed at at-risk uh, youth, both male and female, of people of color. And mm -hmm. the reality is, is that this is our second year. And so when you talked about education, mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco has one of the highest outrageous Dropout, dropout rates, rates for African Americans as well as uh, Pacific Islanders and Latino. and Latino and Samoan communities. And so what, what is critical about the, this opportunity is that we get a chance, the best thing to do, these children are high truant red, uh, rates, but they still go to school from time to time. Something is there that's keeping them there. And so we're trying to catch them right on the edge mm -hmm. before they stop going at all. Because we all know that once they're out in the street during the day, That's it. that leads straight in the juvenile hall. Mm -hmm. And wow. so, you know, we're trying to catch them as early as we can because it takes an entire village to raise a child. Well, I really appreciate you guys being here. And, and, and these women here are very strong women and act, activists and advocates in the community of San Francisco and abroad, as you heard, they even go as far as Washington DC to um, champion for those who are not being tr treated properly in, you know, here in the United States and especially our children in which we live in, in, a, in a society that claim it's our children first, but yet and still you just heard some statistics of I mean, our children, 80% of Bayview Hunters Point alone children are in foster care and group homes. So what I would like for you guys to do is tell them how they can get in contact with you, and then how to go. Okay. okay. Um, Matthew Scott, once again, Healing for Our Families in Our Nation and Mothers in Charge in the Brady Campaign. My phone number is area code 415-412-1469. Um, our email address is Maddie. M A T T I E 728 at ATT.net. Again, 415 412 1469. And I'm Carletta Jackson Lane, Sojourner Truth, Foster Family Service Agency. We have two offices, 150 Executive Park, as well as our second office at 1099 Sunnydale in the building called The Village. And so we, my number is area code 415-647-0662. And my email address is C, as in Charles, Jackson Lane, L-A-N-E, at yahoo.com. We love you. God bless you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, and thank you for tuning in to the Frank Williams Show, where we talk about real issues 
And I tell you, I want to thank you, Maddie Scott, and I want to thank you, Carletta Jackson, for being my guest today. Thank and you. hopefully we can have you back on because there's a whole lot more we need to talk about when we yes. talk about the different variables and things yes. that affect our children, but affect our adults as well, right. and how we are being treated, and yes. how people of color are being treated in San Francisco and other major cities. Right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm gonna